From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. The 112th Tennessee General Assembly is history adjourning Sonny died just a few days ago. As usual, this legislature is full of both achievements and controversies, some of which loom on even as many lawmakers go home to run for re-election. To reflect on the session and bring his perspective, the Speaker of the State Senate, Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally, joins us on Inside Politics this week. Governor McNally, thank you as always for taking the time to be with us today. Glad to be with you, Pat. And we have a lot of controversies to discuss, as we usually do. But what do you see, though, as the biggest accomplishments of the legislature this year? Well, of course, uh, pa passing a balanced budget and passing a budget that really prepares us for any downturn. I'm very concerned about what's happening in our nation. Uh, we've got a very serious inflation problem, food prices, gas prices. Uh, everything seems to be going up. Uh, and uh, it hurts the the uh, consumers in Tennessee. And also, if you look at the stock market and the bond market, uh, they're trending down right now, uh, but the stock market by some very large amounts. And it's uh, very concerning that we might be headed for a recession uh, mm -hmm. in the coming year. So it's this is a budget that prepares us for that and uh, it takes some recurring sources of revenue and spends it on one-time projects. And that means that that source of revenue will be there next year uh, for the state. Do you have any particular disappointments about the things lawmakers did or did not do or did not pass this year? Well, there was one bill that I was interested in uh, that had to do with uh, PSDT uh, for firefighters. And I was uh, one of the co-sponsors on that bill. I believe Senator Briggs had it. Uh, and as a, a I, in, in my career, I spent some time as a volunteer firefighter with the Marlowe Volunteer Fire Department. And I, got a taste of what firefighters go through on a daily basis. I was uh, I did a uh, training on putting out a, a, a propane fire and uh, also I went in on a trailer fire. Uh, I was the second man in and uh, there was, you know, I had a had a had an air pack on uh, had all the equipment and uh, was following the first guy in, you know, checking for people. And he had the hose and I had the backup on the hose. And it was a it was a scary. Probably those are some of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. And these are things firefighters go through on a daily basis. So, PSDT for firefighters and police and and first responders. Uh, I fully understand the need for that, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to. We almost got it through. We ran into difficulty with the fiscal note at the end, but uh, we'll we'll try to get it through next year. Now, the 112th General Assembly uh, ended to work with, under a cloud of, of potential scandal. There's an ongoing federal investigation and a grand jury probe regarding potential campaign finance irregularities. One House lawmaker has already resigned, and several others appear to be implicated in what we know about so far. You've been in the General Assembly for many years. You've seen and played a role in rooting out wrongdoing in past federal investigations. Does it grieve you to see this yet another scandal coming up on Capitol Hill? It does, very much so. Uh, of course, I was involved, uh, worked with the FBI and TBI in the Rocky Top investigation and really gained a, a, a great respect for those two agencies. And uh, the uh, 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 fact that it's happening again uh, is really concerning to me. And uh, it's Speaker Sexton and I had talked about this on many occasions, and we actually came up with some legislation to help address part of it. You think that will actually 
make a difference this time, keep these scandals from occurring. They happen, it seems, with pretty irregularity, about once a decade or a little more further, a little more often. Is this one going to change it, this change, particularly in, in terms of dealing with dark money from groups that don't have to disclose who gives them what money I and how they spend it? Will. it? I think it will, because there, uh, there, I, I believe there are cases in which people raise money and then use it for their own personal use. Uh, use it as their employment, as a bankroll for for them to uh, promote their ideas. And also, I think in, in some cases, uh, they use it to uh, uh, punish uh, certain lawmakers who uh, attempt to do things. And they'll come in at the very end of a campaign uh, with lots of dollars and you don't know where it's coming from. Uh, and this would at least prov provide disclosure on where that money is going and and how it's being spent. Are you and Speaker Sexton also teamed up on another bill that passed the legislature that you call truth in sentencing? Uh, it, it revolves those who have been convicted of violent crimes. It, as it finally passed, though, the bill was not as broad as perhaps you wanted. It, does this last-minute compromise mean that Governor Lee will not veto it, then he'll probably most likely let it come into law without his signature? Uh, I would say that's a good possibility. I know we worked with Governor Lee's uh, folks uh, in the in the legislature and and we're, uh, we were mindful of his concerns and certainly took them to heart and uh, we, uh, I believe, addressed a lot of them in the bill and uh, I think hopefully that he would not veto it. Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally is our guest. He's the Speaker of the State Senate. We're talking about the 112th Tennessee General Assembly, which just concluded its work in the last couple of days. Back to continue our conversation with the Lieutenant Governor after this break.